Well, um, Nepal was one of the first countries in the world to produce a preliminary SDG assessment report way back in 2015, before the SDGs were formally launched, right? After that, we've had a series of uh, major setbacks. We had the earthquake, uh, we had the trade blockade, we had frequent changes in government. So I think the initial momentum was lost a little bit. But this year, in 2017, we're trying to regain that momentum and really do a couple of things uh, quite fast. The first output we have in mind is a full-blown SDG baseline study that goes uh, over and beyond what has been prescribed globally on, um, on, on, the, on the indicators, for example. So uh, about uh, we're trying to take a baseline. Um, we're trying to set uh, aside uh, uh, intermediate uh, milestones and the end target for almost 400 indicators you know, uh, corresponding to uh, the 17 uh, uh, goals and, 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 the, and the targets. Well, I'd look at it in terms of a framework of uh, three I's. That's what I call three I's. The first I is identification right, of needs. Not all the 17 goals are equally relevant to us. Goal number 14 is completely useless, irrelevant for us, for example. Uh, the second is instruments, identifying instruments uh, that will work in the case of Nepal on the biggest priorities. And third is investment, right? How do we muster the resources from the government, from uh, the private sector, from the non-governmental sector and households who also play a big role in meeting the SDGs. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the overarching framework that we're looking at. On identification, we're starting with sectors and roadmaps that are already in place for uh, let's say agriculture, for roads, for tourism. The challenge for that is to now vet whether many of the milestones are realistic, uh, whether um, the interventions that have been uh, outlined in the sectoral strategies are well costed, and whether that aligns with the larger macroeconomic framework that we have, we need to uh, put in place, right? So um, the second is in areas which are not costed, uh, you, you deploy a lot of analytical firepower be it computable general equilibrium modeling or scaling up of unit costs uh, relative to the final output targets that we have set, right? And, uh, and there are sectors which uh, don't lend themselves to costing, you know, for issues like uh, uh, inequality or sustainability of consumption production. Uh, you have to intervene in those areas, in those goals, uh, through smart policies. Uh, not everything is, uh, you know, dependent on spending money. So uh, you have to take a, a variety of approaches variety of instruments to addressing uh, the various challenges. So identification of needs and priorities that are really tailored to your domestic needs. So in Nepal's case, jobs and growth, is, I would say, is the most important agenda uh, relative to the other goals. Um, and uh, in identification of instruments and investment. Right? So, so what is the government doing to increase jobs and growth? We have uh, a 14th periodic plan, which is um, uh, already in place. and. Uh, it covers the 2016 to 2019 uh, period. It has identified several sectors which uh, lend themselves to higher growth. In Nepal, we face a big infrastructure crunch. So investment in roads, investment in clean energy, investment in niche manufacturing. We cannot com compete on everything with uh, big countries like India and China and Bangladesh and Vietnam. So we're trying to identify sectors uh, where Nepal has an edge you know, in terms of labor, in terms of uh, once the clean energy uh, comes on board, uh, soon we expect to reach a surplus production in clean energy. So, you know, um, tourism is another, another sector where Nepal can really scale up and create jobs. Uh, niche agriculture is another sector where, where there's already a 20-year agriculture development strategy that's, that's in place. So it's a variety of approaches. There's no single magic bullet, silver bullet that solves everything. What are you hoping to achieve from this conference? What do you hope to take back? Well, uh, I think many countries are presenting on what they're doing. So uh, I, I would watch out for some innovative ideas and experiences that some of them are doing. I don't, uh, again, I think everyone is here to see what other countries are doing. Uh, so it's just a cross-fertilization of ideas and sharing of experiences. So I heard this lady from Samoa, for example, which was interesting, that some of the challenges that they're facing is also similar to that of Nepal. For example, you know, there's so, much, uh, so many silos and and, and fragmented approach to implementing development. They don't even take a sectoral approach. It's all ministry by ministry approach, right? That's a problem that we uh, uh, are quite familiar with in Nepal. So the challenge would be to 
towards a sectoral and then a pan-sectoral uh, vision uh, for integrated development. UNDP doesn't have the resources or the strength uh, uh, to help in the big infrastructure uh, where a lot of the SDGs uh, goals are dependent on and if growth, inclusive growth, high and sustained economic growth is our priority, that's not UNDP's forte. Where I do see UNDP's role is perhaps in, uh, in the softer, softer side of SDGs, which is equally important, right? So data, monitoring. Uh, the convening capacities, you know, there are a lot of SDG implementation committees in place. Uh, maybe UNDP can help um, uh, help uh, run those uh, softer institutions uh, smoothly, right? And uh, finally, I think uh, it can bring, it has a global presence, so it can bring some innovative ideas from countries that are comparable to us, landlocked countries, low-income countries, LDCs from elsewhere, where certain experiences might uh, be uh, applicable to us. Nepal is an example uh, of a country that has made uh, major advances in political and social uh, development despite having a very sluggish and stagnant economic performance. So sometimes we hear this debate uh, that first you progress economically and then you take care of your social or environmental or your political situation. That's not the case. That's not the case in Nepal. Despite a lackluster economic prog progress, we have made fantastic uh, achievements in the social, environmental, and political gains. So that's uh, one, uh, uh, one lesson uh, that we can share to the world. Within, uh, uh, within the social uh, realm, you know, issues of gender equity, community-led development, community-led uh, conservation efforts, I think there's a lot that Nepal can share uh, with the rest of the world. Having said that, we are not happy with the pace of economic progress, hence, this uh, accelerated focus that we must now adopt on the economic agenda. And uh, so one caution I have is when we list all the 17 goals and 169 targets and, and 400 indicators in the case of Nepal, that we're all over the place and we lose, you know, we lose focus on the big prize, uh, on the big, uh, big priority. So, so I think uh, the eye on the ball has to be there. And that's the big challenge of the policymakers, that while you, uh, you maintain focus and maintain emphasis on all the priorities, I think there are a few things where, where added emphasis is needed uh, because that's where the low-hanging fruits are. That's where uh, achievements on other sectors are contingent upon uh, satisfactory development.